Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of how to enter and exit a vehicle using animations. So like I said at the end of the last video it was a long one so I split it into two and this is part 2 where we're going to be creating the actual entering and exiting mechanics. So previously what we did was we created it all, we put it all together, we created the interacting, created all the animations and again today we're putting that together to actually now enter and exit the vehicle using those animations. So if you haven't watched part one already, I would definitely recommend going to watch it. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get right back into it. And we're going to be starting off by going into our car BP. So that for me is going to be in content, vehicle BP, sedan, sedan here. Now we'll actually start setting up the code for entering and exiting with animations. So what we're going to do first is go up to class settings at the top, add an interface, and we're going to add the interact interface here. And this is just so that we can do this code off of this interact function so that we can then call it from our player blueprint to actually interact with the car. So we're going to compile and save that. Then you'll notice on the left we have a tab called interfaces. We can open that up and double click or right click and implement function, our interact function here, just so we can use it nicely. And you'll notice again we now have our interactor character reference here so we now know which player is actually interacting with the car. So what we want to do is when they first start interacting with the car, we want to move the player into the correct position for the animations. And that is our enter mesh here. So we're going to drag in our enter mesh, because again, that is our reference. Drag out of it and get the world transform, which again is why we had to rotate it as the rotation is slightly different for the world transform. But again, make sure it is the world transform, not the relative. And then we're going to drag out of interactor on the event interact and set actor transform again just actor transform not relative not world just actor and the new transform will go into the get world transform like so and again we're doing transform so we can do the location and the rotation all in one node after this we now want to start playing the animation montage for getting in so we're going to drag out of interactor again and play anim montage the function up here and the anim montage for me is going to be entering car montage like so. Now the rest of the code we want to do once this animation has finished playing. So we're going to hold down D left click to get a delay with the duration being the return value of the play and the montage as this return value is the length of the animation. So basically once the animation is finished playing this delay will fire off meaning we can do the rest of the code. That rest of the code is going to be moving the player into the driver's seat and making them play the driving animation. So let's do that. So the reference we're going to be using for that is the sitting mesh. So we'll drag in a setting mesh here. Then as we did earlier, we're going to get the world transform just like we did for the enter mesh. And I'm going to straighten this up like so and move it over just to keep it nice and organized. Then what we've got to do again is just set the transform for the player. So out of interactor, we're going to set actor transform. As you can see here, completed of the delay, new transform is the set or get world transform, sorry. Just like so. So this is now going to move the player into the driver's seat. This is so we can then line them up perfectly to play the animation. So drag out of interactor and play anim montage with the anim montage this time around being our driving montage. We can compile and save that. Now what we also want to do is attach the player to the car so when the car moves the player will move with it and we also want to possess the car so we're now going to be controlling it so we can drive it around. Those are also very simple. If we once again track out of the interactor, of the event interact, and attach actor to actor, with this one being the target, so the interactor, the player being the target, and the parent actor being get a reference to self, i.e. the car, the socket name will just be non as we don't want to attach it to anywhere specific because, again, with this car, there isn't any good names. Now, if you're using your own car mesh, you might have a bone or a socket for the driver's seat in which you can then attach them to that. But obviously do this for what makes most sense for you. The location, rotation and scale rule we're going to keep as world because again, we've just moved the player to the correct location. So we want to keep them in that location. So now the player will move with the car when the car drives off. And in order for the car to drive off, the player needs to control it. So we're going to right click, get a player controller, which we'll get player controller, sorry. And return value will just be possess. So the player is now possessing and controlling the car. The in pawn is just get a reference to self. So again, the pawn we're controlling 
is this one, i.e. the car. We can compile and save that, and this is now the code all set up for getting into the car with the correct animations and also having the driving animation while we are driving as well. Again, the driving animation isn't anything dynamic, it will just be a normal one like you see in movies, they're just randomly moving the wheel and it's not actually corresponding to what they're doing, but obviously again, this is basic and free. Now underneath this, we want to do the code for exiting the car, so that is also nice and simple. We can right click and get to the interact event we got earlier, the interact action event we created earlier, so here we are, action events interact, and the reason why we're doing this is because the function will not work of the interface anymore because that is for the player. We're no longer playing as the player, we're playing as the car. So when we press the interact function, it will fire this one off here because we are in the car blueprint now. So pressed, we want to just do basically the opposite of this code. So first of all, we want to detach from the car. So we're going to drag out the interactor off of the event interact here. We can still use that same reference and simply detach from actor like this and we don't need to specify which actor it will work automatically. The location, rotation and scale rule we again want to put as keep world so we stay in the same position we're currently in i.e. the driver's seat so when we get out of the car we're going out of the driver's seat as that makes sense obviously. Then as we're going to be playing as the player within the car the collision's obviously going to mess up so we want to disable the collision for the car. If we do it for the player, they will start falling through, the animations will not look good. So if we just do set actor enable collision, leaving it unticked, they will no longer have collision. Now this is fine for a single player game because obviously there's nothing really going to be going through the car, however if this is multiplayer or you think the car will actually be then colliding with something while doing this, you might want to find a different way of doing this so you could possibly disable the player's collision and maybe make them fly so they don't start falling or you could create your own custom collisions so that they can just overlap each other. You can obviously go into much more detail with this if you wanted, again I'm just showing the basic fundamental code behind it. You can obviously go into a lot more detail if you want, again using those examples or maybe even if you contact me on discord I might be able to help you out further. After this we again want to now play an animation for exiting the car. So we're going to drag out of the interactor, but what I'm going to do is double click this line here to get a root node. So I can then drag out of that and play and in montage. That's to again just to keep it looking nice and organized. And I'm going to get another root node here, like so. This animation wants to be exiting car montage. We're again going to do the delay up here so the rest of the code fires off after the animation has finished playing. And the rest of the code, we want to then move the player out of the car. So the animation has moved them to be outside of the car. We now also want to move the player to be in the correct position. So it's not just the animation, it's the actual player. So to do that, we can just use the same enter mesh reference. So you might want to rename that to enter slash exit mesh, but enter works for me. So enter mesh, get world transform. And again, out of the interactor, we're going to set actor transform like so connecting it into the delay and then new transform being the get world transform like that. So now the player is going to be standing outside of the car. So they've exited with the animation and they're also standing outside the car. We now also want to start playing as the player again. So we can right click get player controller, not character sorry, but we want get player controller. Out of this we're going to possess. You don't need to unpossess but you can if you want but again it's not necessary. So we're going to just possess the in pawn being the interactor or the player again we referenced earlier. Now we've exited we also want to just re-enable the collision of the car or again whatever it is that you've ended up deciding to do. So we can just set actor enable collision, tick it so there is collision there. We can compile and save this and again this is now the code fully working for exiting the car as well. So let's hit play and test this out. So you see we don't see any of the mesh references there as again that's just for the developer. If we walk up to it, press E, we got moved into the correct position, we're playing the animation for getting into the car, gets a little bit janky but that's just because they are free, the car doesn't have the correct modeling for it. We're now in the car playing the driving animation and we can now drive around as well. If we were to stop the car, let's wait for it to stop, press E to get out, we're now playing the animation for exiting the car, opening an invisible door obviously and closing it and we're now in the correct position although we haven't so actually so you'll see that we haven't actually gone back 
to the correct animation. So the animation montage is finished, but we've not gone back to controlling the player, so now we're stuck like this. So let's have a look at why that's happened. I imagine what I did was I wasn't supposed to untick blend out for the exiting car montage. So let's go into the exiting car montage, and yeah, I did tick enable auto blend out, but I've just checked my notes and I wasn't actually meant to do that. What we're meant to do is just tick the blend out time to zero. So blend out time is zero, enable auto blend out is still true, save, close, and we'll test this out again. So everything else should be the same, getting in, all that. All we need to test is getting out. So we're in, press E to get out, we're playing the animation, and we should see that once we're out, we get moved to the correct position and we can control the player again, like you can see here. So this works perfectly, again, it doesn't look amazing, however, it does work for what we wanted to do with a very basic version of our animations. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. Again, we've set up a very basic animation system, so we can press E to get into our car with the animations. Once we're in, we have a driving animation and we can also still control the car. And once we stop the car, we can also press E to get out as well. Now again, you'll notice these animations, the feet kind of stick through the floor of the car. If I were to get in, if actually if I play into the viewport, then get in and eject, you'll see that the player's feet will stick through the floor. Again, this is just because of the animations and the mesh that I'm using. If you have your own custom ones, this will look a lot better. I'm really just trying to get that into your heads so that you know this obviously isn't a perfect visual system, However, the fundamental code behind it is still there, so you can just change it visually for what you want. I'm just using free assets. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.